And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Nidavellir. This is a game which I had no idea anything about it. I didn't even know what this word was, other than they mention it quite a bit in the Avengers Infinity War movie. It's uh, the place where, I guess, Thor's hammer was made. And that's what this is sort of like. Hey, you got a bunch of uh, dwarves or Vikings. I'm not sure what the theme is exactly, because the theme doesn't really matter. But what I heard about this game was that it was a very hot game overseas. I was like, well, that sounds interesting. And Serge was Jet, the designer, is a person who I really liked uh, his co-designs a lot. He's done many different co-designs, including the incredible Shadows Over Camelot. So I was very excited to try this one out, but let's see what it's like. Nidavellir is all about collecting dwarves. There are five different colored dwarves, um, and each of those dwarves is going to score points in different ways. We'll come back to that. And the way that you're going to be scoring points is by, or collecting the dwarves, is over a period of turns. In each turn of the game, and you're going to go through one deck and then another deck. The decks are pretty much identical to some degree. It's just to have a, a correct distribution of dwarves. You're going to put out dwarves underneath these three signs here that are equal to the number of players playing. So the way I have it set up here is for a four-player game. Each player is going to start the game with five coins, a zero, two, three, four, and a five. Each round, after you see which dwarves are placed under each, each sign, you're secretly going to place a bidding coin on three of the signs. And then you're going to put your leftover coins down here. Each player is also going to be starting with one of these diamonds. These diamonds are simply for tiebreaker purposes. Starting with the top one, each player is going to reveal their coins. And whoever plays the highest coin is going to get to pick a dwarf first. The second highest picks a dwarf second, third, and fourth. As players pick these, there's often going to be ties. In case of a tie, you're going to compare these diamonds that you have, and the higher number wins. Although at the end of a, at the end of a round, this token here just reminds you that if you tied with somebody and you won the tie, you're going to be switching um, the diamonds so that if you lose a tie you're going to win them in the future. If a player bids their zero token, when that happens they're going to reveal the two coins that they did not bid. In this case they you did not bid the five and the three. You will add those two coins together. That makes an eight. You'll then discard the higher coin, the five, and replace it with an eight. So you can see there's all sorts of coins here in this display. If for some reason the eight wasn't available, you take the nine. If the nine was available, you take the 10. And these coins go all the way up to 25. As you collect these coins, you can see every time you play a zero, you're going to lose a coin, but you're gonna replace it with a higher one that you'll be able to use in bidding. As you collect dwarves, they're going to be worth points, and you're going to put them in columns in front of you of the same type. Blue are just worth points. They're the easiest one. You just collect the points for each one. Red are very similar to that. Red are worth points, but whoever has the most red at the end of the game is going to get to take their highest coin, and hopefully maybe you got the 25 coin, and you're going to score that as points again. Coins are worth points equal to their value, but the reds will give you another one. Purple and green are both mentioned here. Purple will give you points based on how many you have according to this chart. I got three, so that's worth 12. While green are worth the square of how many you have. So I have one green, it's worth one, but 10 greens would be worth 100 points. And finally, orange is going to be the number of banners that you have. So here's four orange banners times the numbers add it on those orange banners. So here, two, three, four, five. This is five times four, that's 20. Also, as players are collecting these, as soon as you have one dwarf of every color, uh, making an entire row across the board, one of each of the colors, you're going to get a leader. 
When you take a leader, it's possible they'll finish another row and you'll get another leader. But the leaders are much more powerful versions of the dwarves. Many of them are different colors. You can see here, for example, this one's a purple, but it's worth three purples. And this one's worth three greens, although this one also makes you discard two of your cards. So there's some restrictions on these, but they're just worth various amounts of points. There's also some that have no colors, but they have special abilities or something. This one, for example, is worth 13 points. And if you get him and his brother, they're worth 40. If you get all five of them, that's 135 points. But they're not a color. Other ones, well, this one's worth 17 points. Some count as a wild color. And so there's different leaders that you can have, and you will collect these in order as you finish each of the rows. Halfway between in the game, between eras one and two, you're going to count who has the most of each dwarf, and they're going to get a bonus. Whoever has the most orange dwarves gets this diamond here, which it means you're going to always win ties. If you win the most blues, you draw three cards from the deck and keep one. This one, you replace your zero coin with the three coin, which still lets you change in your uh, other coins to get better ones, but now it's a value three. The purple just gives you this card, which is worth two purples, and the red gives you, lets you get rid of one of your coins and add a plus five to it which is very similar to cards that show up throughout the game. You can take these instead of dwarves, and they add five to one of your coins. That's pretty much it. At the end of the, that's at the, between one and two. At the end of two, you're going to get points for your coins. Diamonds provide points, and then the dwarves will score points, and the leaders, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. There's a lot of pieces in this game. I do wish the game came with a board. Putting these out and putting this stuff underneath them, like, I, I just think it's funny that they have this piece here, which shows you that you switch these, and then this, and why wasn't this all just a board? Not a, not a huge deal. I just think I would have preferred this had been a board. I really do like the dwarves themselves. I like the black and white artwork, and you can see the different colors, but there's also a symbol, so you don't have to worry about any colorblind issues. Figuring the orange is the only one that's slightly complex to figure out scoring wise. The rest are really well done. This coin holder is neat, and fortunately, once it's assembled, it does fit back in the box. I'm probably going to glue mine together just so it doesn't fall apart because you know how these cardboard things can, but it's just neat to have these out there. It all The game also comes with these little card holders, which are just to display the leaders and the in-between bonuses between one and two, which are cool, although they're easy to knock down. Um, but I like them. So other than I wish that the game had a board, I think the components are pretty cool. Wow, I love this game. I really enjoy it. Um, it is a themeless game, and it is a quick, speedy style game. And the best way I've described it, I think, is it's like it's Splendor for gamers. Now, don't get me wrong; I think Splendor is for gamers, and I like. But I like games like that where you're just collecting things. I like the way that this points score in this one. You collect the different things, but it's how you do so with five coins. You have five coins. You're bidding with three of them, and the other two probably you're changing into another coin. You don't have to. You don't have to bid your zero. You can put your zero down there and bid just bid numbers, but at what cost, right? So that's a, it's a, such a fascinating thing. You're going to bid that zero coin at, in the first few turns of the game for sure. So, But wherever you bid that zero, you're not going to get one of those dwarves. And you're going to fight to get those dwarves. You're going to pick a color or two and really try to get a lot of that color. I want a bunch of the purples because I can square them. I want a bunch of the greens. And, and it's interesting um, because, I mean, the greens you square, the purples, um, are just worth a certain amount of points how many you get. The purples def get more points with fewer. The green gets more points with more of them. And it's kind of like, oh, which ones do I want? Or do I want just blue, straight points? At the same time, you definitely want those leaders. You want to get a dwarf of every color if possible because those leaders are so powerful. You can make one of your colors even better. You can pick those leaders which are just worth straight points or a leader that gives you a special ability. Also, having a lot of one color gives you those bonuses between rounds. It's such, it's so neat and it's so varied. I love the five coin system where you're switching out your coins, but no matter what, you only have five. So it's kind of like a, a deck builder, I suppose, but with just five coins. And then they're worth points at the end, so that's worth doing. But you also want to win the auctions. And by winning the auctions, getting the colors you need. 
you're definitely watching what everyone else is taking. You want to stop other people from getting leaders or getting too many of one color, but not at the expense of yourself. It's a very interactive, fun, fast game. I will say there are some cards in each deck that you add to, for a five-player game. So those two decks of cards, there's some cards for a five-player game. There's not the same thing for a three- to four-player game. So the three-player game is longer than the four-player game, and I think that's for the better. I actually like the three-player game better because you can get more points in a three-player game. In a four-player game, there's the same number of cards as the three-player. And I, I wish there had been a difference of numbers of cards for three, four, and five. But that's a very minor quibble. The scores in this game are pretty high. So, for example, here's a game, 306 points, the 303, the 241. A lot of points are given out. It can be close. It can be spread out. But either way, it's one of those games where you feel like you're doing something fun all the time. Every time when you bid a coin, you're getting something. It may not be the exact color dwarf that you want it, but you're going to get something, and I think that's a good thing. Also, that upgrading coin mechanism is so satisfying. You can put your high coins down in the bottom, which means you're not using them to bid, but then you turn them into a very high-value coin. And when those plus five coins show up to things to bid for, that's a tough one. Plus five to my coin? That seems fantastic, but at the same time, I'm not taking a dwarf. I'm taking one of those instead. So... The, I, I don't want to make this game sound complex. It's not. Now, I will say the rule book, which I thought was very well done, spends a huge amount of time. Well, there's a lot of theme in here, so that's neat. I guess so if you want to read about the leaders of Nidavellir. But there's also, they go over detail of every leader. And there's two leaders that take up a whole page because of their, they're the wild leaders and explains how you put them in. And I was like, I don't know. I might have just taken those few leaders and put them in the play with the advance game. But at least the rule book does explain everything really clearly. Thing is, once I go over this game, you're going to pick it up really quickly and jump into it. This is a game which I'm surprised has, well, I mean, I'm not, I guess I'm not surprised because it hasn't hit the American shores, which is why we're not hearing buzz over here about it. But when it does, this is going to be a game a lot of people are loving and playing. I really enjoy it. It's one of the, it's one of the games this year that I played, and instantly, I mean, when I read the rules, I was like, I'm on board. When I played it, I was even more enthralled. It's fast, it's simple, and it feels like other games, like Splendor and those style games, but it feels also different. Something unique and interesting in that genre. Stuff like that always excites me, and so I wholeheartedly recommend Nidavellir. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent! Thank you.